Poor kid, man. He had his hand out the whole time for Gallagher trying to greet him. All excited to see a player that he liked. Gallagher looked at him, looked to the side, pulled the white kid over to the front. And yeah, yeah, I know. It was, it was kind of disappointing to see that moment, man. So I think actually Chelsea deserves it because of that, actually. Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of The Corner Flag and you are here with your favorite host, The Shane and you are shooting our episode from ISB Studios once again uh, so if you're in Pretoria, definitely the place to be if you want to get yourself laced up and in today's episode of The Corner Flag of course we are doing part one of our roundup <laughs> this is our roundup of our um, process of players overseas of course this is only part one because um, these are the matches that started at like 5 o'clock, so it's kind of a busy weekend. Uh, so the first game, of course, was our boy in England. We're visiting England right now. Um, now, first, of course, in this game against Chelsea, and we'll also be looking at Gabon Melokuri who was in action for his team on Rente as they're playing against the former team of La Fasta, ironically, and Mongani Zungu, Vitoria Gomaraish. Um, so definitely we'll be looking at both those games. Um, so let's go ahead and start off in England because that's the game that started first, of course, starting over at 5 o'clock here in South Africa. Uh, Burnley coming up against Chelsea. And it was actually a good time for La Costa to come back, of course. Uh, for fun, of course, is a Chelsea player, so he was ineligible to play against his parent club. And that just gave Foster the opportunity to come back, of course, building off of his momentum coming in. I think he played the last 10 minutes of the win against Brentford. Uh, so it was great to see him back in action again. And yeah, getting into the game, before we talk about him specifically, let's just talk about the game. The opening few minutes, it was kind of, you know, it was a bit of an open game, man. The momentum went both sides. Paul Palmer, my God, wow, right? <laughs> um, yeah, it was just absolutely electrifying today. Played an absolutely amazing game. Jackson was okay. Jackson was okay. He played a lot for the team, you know, so he didn't really shine too much. But as a team player, I'd say he played really, really well uh, for Chelsea. On that side, of course, um, Cucurella was, yeah, just... <laughs> all up in there today. He played really, 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 really well. Also, um, Gallagher had a fair game, you know, fair game. I wouldn't say it was bad, but um, yeah, you know, could have seen, could have uh, seen a little bit more from him. Uh, Mudrik as well showed, um, posed himself on the game today as well. I think Chelsea overall would feel a little bit hard done by the score, looking at the fact that yeah, Burnley were <laughs> after all ten men. Um, so the fact that they drew this match, I think they will be the less happy of the two teams, of course. And from Burnley's side, of course, I think they played really, really well. As I said, in the first um, the first half, it opened up really, really well. <laughs> they opened up really, really well. Jakob Brunlarsen, you know, that's really fun name to say always. Um, really imposed himself on the game as well. Otto Bay also had some clever touches here and there. And Alfasta as well. Um, you know, I'd say he played really, really well. I wouldn't say he played a bad game. Whenever he had the ball, he had intelligent uh, touches to play, a few combinations here and there. Um, so yeah, for his first game back, I don't think he played he played too badly uh, um, when it comes to that fact. Um, and who else? Who else played really, really well? I'd say Asignan, before he got the, 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 the second yellow, I think he played really, really well, man. I'd say he really, really played really, really well. I think he really um, fills that uh, fullback position really, really nicely for, for Burnley. So it was really disappointing to see him come off in the fashion that he did. It was a penalty, but I don't think it was a second rate. I think that was a really harsh decision uh, from the referee. But he was just <laughs> handing out yellow cards like, yo, <laughs> I don't know how many in total, uh, but yo, he was just handing out. Yo, he was like, Oprah, you get a yellow card, you get a yellow card, you get a yellow card, you get a yellow card. So, yeah, it was, it was, it was a yellow card fest for everybody. Um, yeah, but you know, as I said, 
it was a really good game from Burnley's side. I think they rescued the points, especially looking at the fact that Chelsea's really tough opposition and in their journey, of course, um, to try and like rescue some points. Um, they would have been better. Uh, 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 they would have been happy of the two sides, especially looking at the fact that they had a Rick Hyde in it as well. Um, Foster coming back, really good from him. Cullen, great goal from him as well. Daro Shea, um, rescuing the, the, the point for uh, Burnley. So it was great performance from those guys. Cole Palmer, yeah, getting a brace today. So fantastic, fantastic, fantastic game from, um, you know, Stamford Bridge. Really didn't disappoint that game. I think we're going to see a few more memes about Sterling and Chelsea, but yeah, that, that, that won't be me. Although there is something that I do want to share. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but there was a clip that had been shared up, um, with Gallagher in the tunnel. Um, there were two kids that were there. Um, you know, always they have these kids that they always look out of the tunnel with. And two of them were, one of them was white, one of them was black. And they were both, they both had Chelsea shirts on. And this black kid, poor kid, man, he had his hand out the whole time for Gallagher trying to greet him, all excited to see a player that he liked. Gallagher looked at him, looked to the side, pulled the white kid over to the front, and yeah, yeah, no, it was it was kind of disappointing to see that moment, man. So I think actually Chelsea deserves it because of that, actually. So yeah, very, very disappointing sportsmanship from, from Gallagher. And yeah, so Chelsea suffered the, 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 the fate of that, as some people say on the internet. And yeah, going over to Portugal, Morales of course got going up against, um, going up against the uh, what's this man, Victoria Gomaraes. <laughs> yo, I don't know why this. I forgot that for a moment, but yo, it was a choppy game. It was a really choppy game. Uh, started 30 minutes after the the, the Burnley and Chelsea game, um, but it was a really choppy game, man. Two stop and start, a lot of fouls, very very physical. Um, I think. I think what attributed a lot of that was a lot of the players held on to the ball too long. You know, as soon as one guy got the ball, you pass one guy, but then you're gonna pass another one and another one and another one. No, bro. Like, you know, as soon as you pass one guy, pass the ball. The ball moves a lot faster than you. So it was really, really disappointing because even then combinations were ruined because of that. One guy, you know, in, in encounters as well, you'd find where, um, for example, with a 40, <laughs> they're in the middle of a counter, they pass him the ball, and he's just supposed to pass it to the next guy and get the counter going, and then it goes through his legs and the whole counter is ruined. Allen, the same situation as well, and you know, funny enough, these guys both got yellow cards and they will be missing the next game for more rente. So, yeah, I think it was just filled with just those kind of moments, um, and yeah, especially for the first half, the commentator was complaining. You know the commentator, the English, uh, he's, 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 he's definitely Portuguese, but he was, he was commentating in English and he was not happy about the match at all. He was complaining throughout. He was talking about, oh, this is such a bad match, oh, and such a bad match. I wish I could report on something here, but nothing is happening. So I can't report on, on, on anything happening. And as soon as, um, Jota Silva scored, uh, the goal in the second half, he was like, oh, thank God. He sounded like he was being, you know, saved from torture, you know, talking about this is a very bad game it looked i feel like we're being fed ice you know i was like we're eating ice watching this game so yeah he wasn't happy um but yeah i guess you know that that, that goal was entertaining uh vittorio of course uh clinching the win and moving within i think you know fourth place of of porto and you know they're doing really well really really, really well for themselves um going on to a boy of course you came to talk about uh played really well i think he played good uh, he didn't see too, many, too much of the ball in the first half, but in the second half, definitely played well. I did say, of course, this game was a, a victim of, you know, some players overplaying or doing a little bit too much at the ball. So, Kori Sang is not that type of player. He's a very much a very one-two type of player. So he wasn't really guilty of that. Just more so, the momentum got killed. You play one-two with somebody, the ball get, uh, um, um, you know, gets to another player and then as I said with the 40, it goes through the legs, and, <laughs> you know. So yeah, it was just a um, full of unfortunate moments like that. I'd say he played really, really well. I do hope that he does get back onto the radar of, of Hugo Bruce because he does provide another player, a uh, profile of player that we have. Um, I'd say the closest player that we have, closest to him right now, is kind of like somebody like a Palace, but not really. Uh, in a sense that they have a low sense of gravity, you know, Kavman Luka Isang has this thing of pulling off this move where, especially because he likes to hide the line a lot as a winger, 
he holds the ball and you know and then he rotates around the player and then starts sprint, sprinting in in, in 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 the opposite direction to you know start a counter so i really like that about him and he has a knife for goal as well he really likes penetrating into uh the 18 yard area and you know try and finding himself in, in in a good position to score a goal so i do hope that he does get another opportunity um under Bofana Bofana especially because dude like yo why not bro like this dude is really really talented um so yeah i think it was a good game from him unfortunately they did lose <laughs> um but yeah i think he played a really really good game and yeah i guess that brings us to you know the end of part one of our episode there will be some games playing later on of course we will be catching up with um our american boys the boys playing in the mls we talk about my lula um you know uh yeah my lula Tromwane, uh jabulo blom you know the rest of them do they're all playing as well i might do either a, i might split that into a part one and two as well because the first game started around eight and the second game started around half past one in the morning so i will be here for all of those games but yeah i might do part one and part two i don't know we'll have to see uh but yeah please don't forget of course to subscribe share and yeah let's keep following the page and uh yeah road to 500 thank you so much for subscribing all of those who do keep subscribing and we'll see you again in the next episode of the corner flag